Good morning and happy Sabbath. We will, thank you. I would love you to uh, open your Bibles at this time. And if you have your phones with you um, to follow along, we are going to be reading from our scripture in the Bible, Acts 27, 20 to 36. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Again, it's Acts 27, 20 to 36. Now when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we should be saved was finally given up. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Now when the fourteenth night had come, as we were driven up and down into the Adriatic Sea, should midnight the sailors sense that they were drawing near some land. And they took soundings and found it to be twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they took soundings again and found it to be fifteen fathoms. Then fearing, lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had to let down the skiff into the sea, under pretense or putting out anchors from the prow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay in the, sh in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. And as, they, and as the day was about to dawn, Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day, and you have waited and continued without food, and eaten nothing. Therefore I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God to, in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Let us pray together as we approach God's word. Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving us the Bible. As we reflect on this story of Paul and the, uh, the storm at sea, may your Holy Spirit speak to us and give us the message that each one of us needs to hear today. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. It's been a long journey together through the books of Luke and Acts. Um, if you've been here, part of this church family over the last couple of years, you've been with us on this journey. These two books written by Luke, the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, we've gone through the whole thing and we are very close to the end. Um, I had a wave of sadness come over me recently actually as I realized we're about done with this. Um, I have been so blessed to go on this journey through these books. And we have just a couple more weeks, really, till we wrap this up. Before we get into this passage today, I want to say a little bit about the challenge that we face with some of these portions of Scripture, like the one in front of us. It's a story. And I think sometimes we are more naturally drawn to the didactic portions of Scripture, the teaching portions of Scripture, 
where we can read prescriptions about how to live, or where even we can read theology about who God is. But a story like this, as fascinating and interesting as it is, sometimes we don't know what to do with it. We're kind of like, what's the lesson I'm supposed to take away from this story? And if you actually read through the Bible from cover to cover, you'll discover that a great deal of the Scripture is in the form of story. And a lot of those stories you read and you scratch your head and you say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. That was just a weird story. And I want to suggest to you that this is God's design for the Bible. Yes, there are lots of places that teach us very directly. But there are other places that teach us more indirectly. And the stories, here's the cool thing about stories. We all know this. Stories linger in our minds and in our hearts. And we tend to mull them over over the course of days and even weeks and years, and they become part of us sometimes. And I think that's God's design. It's certainly why Jesus taught using stories and parables. And here we have yet another story from the life of the Apostle Paul, a story of a storm at sea, and we stopped the scripture reading just before the shipwreck, but the shipwreck is coming, and if you want to read that, please do, keep going. It's, it's an exciting, fascinating story. Next week in the message, we'll be focusing on the passage that happens right after the shipwreck, once Paul is on the shore. But for now, I want us to talk about this story. And here's, here's a bit of a danger, me as the preacher, giving you some thoughts about this story. Don't let the things that I have to say prevent you and the Holy Spirit from drawing lessons for yourself from this story. The whole point of these stories is that we're supposed to sit with them, mull them over today and next week and next year, and God has things to teach us through these stories. I've just got a few things that seem significant to me, that may be of benefit to you, that we can draw from this story. Taking Paul as an example and I think this is, this is one of the things we can draw from a story like this. We see an example of a, of a Christian leader, Paul, a committed Christian, and how life goes for him, and how he faces life as a Christian. By looking at his example, we might glean some lessons for how we can face life. And in this case, Paul is facing quite a challenge. He's facing a storm. 14 days of a storm, 14 days of darkness and fear. And our scripture reading opened in verse 20 with Luke's observation. Did you notice that? Luke is apparently on the ship as well. He says, we had given up hope. Luke is there. Probably there is one other Christian among the party. It's Paul. It's Luke. And there's one other Christian guy traveling with them, Aristarchus. And everybody else on this ship, all 276 of them, are probably non-Christians. Now, we don't know why Luke and Aristarchus were allowed to travel with Paul. One commentator suggested maybe they traveled as his servants. That's how they were officially able to be with him, even though he's a prisoner on this ship. But Luke, who is a Christian has been in this storm for 14 days, and it's so bad that he has given up hope. And it sounds like everybody has given up hope. I wonder if even Paul had given up hope at this point. But then Paul calls the crew together, and he says, take heart, take courage. Last night, an angel of God appeared to me, the God whom I belong to and whom I serve. And he told me, that nobody's going to die. God, and, and Paul phrases it very interestingly. He says, God told me that I am going to have to stand trial in front of Caesar and that God has graciously given me all of your lives along with my own. What an interesting way to word this 
speech. God has graciously given me your lives, the lives of everyone on board. How to face a fearful situation that causes Luke to despair, and maybe even Paul to despair. In that moment, God gives a wonderful promise to Paul. Now, let's think about this. An angel has appeared, and Paul has this assurance. He has this confidence now. But the storm is raging as strong as ever. The situation is just as dire as always. And yet, the per perspective has shifted on this boat because Paul is able to share courage with people in the midst of a storm. I want us to talk together briefly about Paul's attitude in this storm and Paul's actions during this storm. Many of us, when we face the storms of life, we complain, we question, why is this happening to me? And sometimes we just find ourselves paralyzed, unable to take action in the midst of what seems to be a desperate situation. Paul had plenty of reasons to complain. He was unjustly imprisoned. He's on this ship bound for Rome, and he's kind of excited about that. He's always wanted to visit Rome, but he's in chains. He doesn't have his freedom. And then when they come into port in Crete, Paul, as you may remember, has traveled extensively around the Mediterranean. He's been on lots of ships. Different times of year, he's been on ships. And so he speaks from experience when he tells the captain and crew, and the centurion for that matter, um, we should probably stay in port and winter here. Like, it's too dangerous to go out there. I, I know what I'm talking about. But everybody's in a hurry to get to Rome, and in spite of the bad weather, they strike out. And of course, tragedy befalls. So here's Paul, a prisoner. He's given good advice. His good advice was disregarded, and now they're in a desperate situation. Have you been there? Like, this is a disaster befalling you that is not your fault. In fact, you warned the people around you this was going to happen, and they pulled you along into this disaster. Now, how are you feeling in this moment? You think you might be resentful towards the people around you? You think you might be bitter, and you might be complaining and even raging against the people? But how is Paul dealing with this situation? He provides for us an example of Christian faith and courage and also compassion and love towards the people around him. Because we're all in this together. The whole ship is in trouble. And Paul, though he does begin his speech by saying, I told you so, he does get around to saying, take courage, eat some food. Not a hair on anyone's head is going to perish. Paul's concern in this moment is for the well-being of the people. And even though it doesn't tell us, I'm pretty certain Paul in his prayers, because he was a prayerful man, was praying for God's deliverance, not just for himself, but for everybody on that ship. Why do I get that idea? Because, because of the way the angel gives the message. The angel says, Paul, God has granted you the lives of everybody on this ship. That's such interesting wording. And it, it tells me, perhaps, that Paul had been asking God, God, spare the lives. Even these foolish people who sailed straight into trouble, please spare their lives. Preserve them from their own foolishness. Paul's praying for these people. And God, in answer to this prayer, spares the lives of everyone. This is an incredible attitude to have in the midst of a trial. What's your attitude like in the midst of a trial? This is this kind of just evaluate yourself silently in your own mind and heart. When tragedy is falling and it's not your fault and somebody else has been the cause of your trouble, are you praying for that person and their salvation? Or are you angry and bitter and upset 
and you can't think about anything other than, I hope that person gets what they deserve. You know, Paul could have been praying, Lord, spare my life, but let these fools on this ship die in the sea like they deserve. You know, being honest, many of us here have to admit we've prayed prayers like that. And we've got to admit that David prayed a few prayers like that if you read the Psalms. But that's not how Paul is praying. In the midst of trial, in the midst of fear, in the midst of anxiety, Paul is concerned for the people around him. That's his attitude. And it's not just an attitude that he keeps internally, but it's an attitude that is revealed in his actions. And so in the midst of the storm, Paul, the prisoner, this most unlikely character, steps forward as if he is the one in command of the ship. And he says, look, you've been without food for two weeks now. Everybody needs to eat. This ship is going to be lost. We're going to run aground somewhere, but every life is going to be spared. And, and then the sailors try to escape. Under pretense of letting down some anchors or something, they're lowering the lifeboat and they're going to try to escape as the ship is running aground. And Paul says to the centurion, you can't let that happen. We have all got to stick together. Paul the prisoner is now the one directing everybody because his attitude of courage and of compassion for everybody is allowing him to see what needs to happen. And he's calling the shots and he's blessing everybody on that ship. Do you want to live the kind of life that is able to be a blessing to others in the midst of the most severe storm? Now that's the kind of life worth living. Not a life in which you're panicked and freaking out and needing the comfort of others, but a life in which you have the strength of character and the purpose and the confidence so that as everything is falling apart around you, you are the one who can be the source of strength and courage. You can be the one others are leaning on in the midst of their trial. That's Paul in this moment. And how is he able to do that? That's the question for us. Do you want to, do you want to live a life like that? That in the midst of the storms of life, you are a blessing to others. He's able to do that because he trusts the promises of God. Now, he had a pretty miraculous encounter. An angel appears and says, you're going to be saved. And he's trusting that promise. You may not have that direct encounter with an angel, but you and I have God's promises just as sure. Do you trust the promises of God? And maybe they're not as specific in your exact circumstance. But let me remind you of a few of the promises of God. If you are a Christian, your Lord and Savior Jesus has said to you, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. If you are a Christian, your Savior has said to you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Your Savior says to you, I hold my sheep in my hand and no one can snatch them out of my hand. Your Savior Jesus says to you, though a man die, he shall live if he trusts in me. There is nothing that can happen to you in this life outside the care and protection and will of Jesus. And if you believe that and you believe his promises, you have a rock solid foundation on which to stand so that nothing can sink you. No matter what happens, 14 days of a raging storm and all hope is lost and you still don't have to become bitter towards the people around you because you have a Savior who is with you, who is holding on to you. Amen. We face a lot of challenging situations in our lives and we deal with, we deal with anxiety. And what to do? And I'll just share with you when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm feeling worried, when I'm feeling stressed out by the circumstances around me, I preach to myself. 
And I want to commission all of you as preachers to yourselves and to others. But you got to learn to preach to yourself and preach to other people. Share the gospel with yourself and with others. And when you're facing the trials and when you're tempted and, and you're discouraged and you think hope is lost, you got to say, hey, self, hey, Ryan, don't you remember the promises of God? Don't you remember what he said, that he will be with you always? Don't you remember that you have a good shepherd who cares for you? Come on, remember these truths. You don't need to be anxious. The Apostle Paul says, be anxious for nothing, but with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Ryan, you haven't been talking to God in the last couple of hours about this. You've just been worrying. Why don't you talk to God? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a father who cares, a father who hears, a father who is infinitely resourceful and able to provide for me in this situation. I talk to myself like that. And then I talk to my father. And that's how Paul was able to ride out that storm. Today we come to the table that Jesus prepared for us, spread with the bread representing his body and the grape juice representing his blood. And it's a reminder, it's an opportunity to be reminded in the midst of a storm, whatever it is you're going through right now, this service is an opportunity for you to remind yourself and to let the Holy Spirit remind you that you have a Savior and you have a Father who loves you and sees you and knows what you're going through. He is not distant. He is not far from you. He is with you in the storm, caring for you, providing for you. And even if the worst possible disaster that you imagine comes to pass, he is still able to rescue you from that. We have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear because Jesus has given everything for us.